Welcome back to Web Certain TV. I'm Gemma Houghton. Today, I'm joined by Richard Summers, who's the CEO of Crowdcat, and we're going to talk about how the company and how he believes neuroscience plays a role in digital marketing. So, hi, Richard. Thank you for being here. Welcome. So, everybody, you know, talks now so much about understanding your customer. Everybody knows you need to understand your customer. Yeah. But what does understanding your customer actually mean? Well, for me, I guess the breakthrough with our company is we are dividing what people do from who they are. And what I mean by that is kind of that existential who they are, what their personality is, what drives them, their motivations, their habits, um, what influences them. Understanding that versus the fact that they landed on a particular page or clicked a particular button or read a particular article. Um, so the big thing for me is understanding your customers and understanding who they are, not just what they did. Otherwise you end up with that kind of irritating effect where you go shopping for something for your niece and you end up looking for pictures of teddy bears for the next two weeks on advertising. So, I mean, that, that's a really big deal for me. Is, it's that, it's, it's getting under the hood of how that, who that person really is and how they think and feel and choose. So how do you do that? Uh, well, <laughs> you're we, unsurprised there are sort of a lot of parts to that picture. Um, it starts with what we call behavioral analytics. So the difference between Analytics and behavioral analytics isn't the technology. It's not that we're doing something really fancy on the page. Mm -hmm. um, in both cases, you're just kind of measuring some kind of digital event. But the difference is analytics just tries to measure whatever you can think of. In behavioral analytics, what we do is we work out the psychology or psychological models of how consumers behave and then look for key indicators about who they are and then work out what we should be measuring in order to work out who they are. So it's another way on. And, and the other way I would put it is when you've got analytics, you have to work really, really hard to get insight. You know, you get lots and lots of data sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to know what it means and incredibly hard to do anything with it. Um, when you use behavioral analytics, the insight is automatic. It tells you something about the person in a very human way. And then it's remarkably easy to do something with that information. So it sort of comes the other way on. Um, when you go beyond that, what we do is um, we've actually built up one of the world's biggest behavioral databases. It's literally got billions of interactions. And um, we've worked with thousands of people and psychometrically tested people. And we've got, got kind of this calibration set, if you like. Yeah. And what we can do is take somebody's data and enhance it. So we look at their behavioral, that kind of behavioral analytics data, and we can turn that into what's called a psychometric profile, which is like a full 360 of who that person is. And the good thing about that is not only obviously it enriches the data, but it means that you can combine and compare and contrast data from anywhere in your organization to anywhere else. So for us, we work typically with you know, quite big companies. Our most active clients got 104 business units wow. tonking. I think they've just hit 4,000 plus campaigns with us, right. um, and that's 36 markets. But they can take an insight that they had in um, South America mm -hmm. in a social-based campaign and apply it to a display-based campaign in Asia yeah. because of this globalization of data. So, you know, that, that's kind of a really key big step of, of um, you know, making it, you know, changing the way you look at data and that you can look at your whole audience in one snapshot in a very human way, understand what they're thinking, feeling and choosing, and then divide them up as you need to in terms of campaign by campaign. I hope it wasn't too much. <laughs> yeah, so picking out of that, you know, you're yeah. talking there a lot about psychometrics. So why is that so important? What's, you know, the big deal around that? Um, I suppose as marketers, I mean, certainly I remember agencies and, and, and when I've been in, in sort of brand sites that uh, you have insight teams and you've usually got one, two or three, but it's not usually that big unless you're talking about Barclays mm -hmm. and, um, you know, financial providers like that. And what you're doing is trying to work out how people tick. What can you find out about them that's actually an indicator consistently about who they are and what will be true today and tomorrow? And there's a very limited amount of time and money you've got. Now, if you look at psychometrics, it's over 100 years old. There have been 100 million hours of time spent by top scientists developing the answer to really a single question, is, which is, if I take a really small amount of information off you today, what can I tell about you in the future? and what your life circumstance is. So why reinvent the wheel? Why would you go out there and try and invent this sort of 100 million hours of research? It's, it's kind of um, upside down proposition. What psychometrics gives us is that universal model of human personality. Once you've got a psychometric profile, you can build up probabilities of what people are interested in. You know, do they go fishing? Do they like, you know, fast cars? Um, you can work out um, with a, with a few parameters. You can get to what type of career do they likely have, what's their income level, disposable income, where they might live. Very kind of high-end stuff and yeah. also 
you know, what's going to affect them? How are they motivated? Who are they? Are they the sort of person that's a people person or are they very sort of intellectual? We can work that out as well. Yeah. Um, so it's a real radical power when you've got it to be able to put that information onto a consumer. And yeah, so, you know, want, there's a lot there you can understand. There's a lot of kind of, I guess, information data to wade through trends yeah. to pick out. So how do you use that? How do you make it kind of condense it down into something you can use to then design a better, you know, experience for them however they you know across your web properties okay so i mean it sounds that's the thing isn't it it does sound like oh there's this huge amount and we do we typically collect about 750 times more data in the first year we work with a client than they have in the past but the interesting thing is when you read a profile it's very you know it's, it's almost like a description of a person you can say right okay here's a segment we've isolated and what we're going to tell you about it you know is these people are motivated by you know, saving money, they tend to be quite impulsive. Um, they like, uh, they're an idealistic character trait, so they like big idealistic imagery, they like attributions from famous people, they like this, they like that. Mm. So it's very easy to read. What you're getting is, is, is almost like a description of a person, it's a character. And so marketers find it incredibly easy to pick up those kind of profiles. It's very, very different from being told that, oh, we've discovered a cluster of people that have clicked on this button three times and tend to return in a month. And you're like, well, what does that mean? It's not clear. But if it says, okay, this person is somebody who's very extroverted, they're very out there, they're very involved in you know, active sports or they like you know, quite loud propositions or they're uh, active on social media. These are things you can relate to straight away and say, oh, okay, now I know what to do with that individual. So even though a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of the data you'll collect is anonymous, you don't actually know who the, that person is. Yeah. It's the kind of, the fact that you can understand about their general behavior that helps profiling and segmentation be effective. Yeah, I mean, there's two sorts of, of, of ways you can use profiling and segmentation. Um, first is if you're using, say, email, then you then you can actually build segments and, and, and send different types of emails to different people based on their communications profile, the way they like to absorb information. But the second way I'd say is more powerful and more, you know, a, a bigger part of the picture because most contact we have with consumers is anonymous, as you say. What's interesting is once you understand an audience and all the segments within it, you can build experiences that personalize in real time and can pick up key indicators and sort people into the right groups. So even though I don't know who you are when you first see an ad, by the time you've clicked on a couple of things, I've got a pretty good idea yeah. of who you are and I can serve the right kind of content to you to, to, to grab your attention. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a massive part of what we do is real time personalization based on psychometric data. Yeah. So. Wow, great. Well, very interesting to talk to you today and lots for us to think about, I think. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you.